welcome to another episode of Wellness Through Physical Therapy. I'm your host, Julia Wiegand, who's going to be off to the side of the camera for today. Your neck is an incredibly sensitive and complex part of your body, and for that reason, the pain can sometimes be debilitating. It can also be kind of scary and a little bit stressful too, especially if you don't know what the root cause is or how long that pain is going to last. A real pain in the neck. So for today's episode, Tingo will be taking us through the ins and outs of neck pain, what causes it, where stress comes into play, and how physical can help. So coming up next, we've got all those in and outs of neck pain on wellness through physical therapy and much, much more. So don't go away. And welcome one, welcome all to today's episode of Wellness Through Physical Therapy. I'm Julia Wiegand, and right now we've got Tingo front and center, who is ready to give us the ins and outs of neck pain. First of all, how are you doing, Ting? Doing fantastic, how about yourself? Oh, great, you know, stressful days. Mm -hmm. And speaking of stress, mm -hmm. neck pain can come in a wide variety of forms. So what are some of those forms that you guys see coming into physical during the day to day? So the, um, the, the thing that's front and center right now is with um, everything that's been going on, um, there is a lot of people under a lot of stress and a lot of more people are also working from home as well. So um, we've noted a lot of people being on computers all day for work, um, sitting around on their phones and tablets more. And um, so that requires us to look down a lot, especially with people's workstations that aren't set up right. And, um, arms up like this on, on uh, keyboards. So uh, that's another big form of neck pain that we see, um, aside from the stress. And um, there's also things like uh, just general um, postural issues, um, sleep positions, and obviously there's a traumatic aspect as well. Um, let's say, uh, common, commonly we see people with, um, like after accidents, when they have a whiplash injury, sports injuries, and also uh, people that are just getting older, uh, like myself, that gets arthritis in their neck. And that's another big potential cause of neck pain as well. Now, when our everyday is affected by neck pain, mm -hmm. wow, uh, it's stressful. And a lot of the times neck pain and stress do seem to go mm -hmm. somewhat hand in hand. Now, most of us realize that stress can manifest itself in many ways, including mm -hmm. headaches, migraines, mm -hmm. and those tight muscles right. when we're talking about the neck here. And right. even anxiety mm -hmm. plays a factor into it too, because mm -hmm. At that point, your body is being put through a ringer when mm. it's in fight or flight mode constantly. Mm. Right. So I actually read that we're releasing hormones that actually tense up our muscles, mm. which can obviously contribute to further anxiety. Right. So there was actually a, a Harvard um, psychologist who studied that exactly. It's a, um, what they found was within two minutes of adopting a certain posture, let's say you're stressed and you're like this, um, your body's going to change hormonally um, internally to manifest in that situation. So whether you're stressed out, you're frowning, um, whatever it is that you're doing, um, your body will regulate towards that. So um, the opposite does happen as well. So if you're smiling, if you're feeling great, like sitting up nice and tall, um, your body's going to create hormones based on that. So the key hormone is, uh, is testosterone and it's also um, the stress hormone cortisol. So um, if you're stressed, if you're like bad posturally and you're like not feeling so great, um, your body's gonna create more cortisol. So cortisol is the stress hormone that's gonna kind of wreak havoc in your body, creating muscle tension, muscle pains, all that type of stuff. So yeah, definitely um, the hormonal changes in the body are extremely important. Well, whatever the type and cause, all mm -hmm. neck pain seems to have one common clear thing mm -hmm. to be aware of, it, it needs to be addressed and it needs to be addressed quickly. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like the smartest thing to do is get help as soon as possible for it. Yeah, my, my saying is um, um, look after small problems before they become big problems. And um, a lot of people think that just muscular aches and tension isn't so bad, but um, they've actually found, um, there, there's a group of um, uh, medical community out there that actually believe that tight muscles can manifest towards arthritis as you get older. So if you can imagine a tight muscle um, pulling your joint down together, um, so a tight muscle is going to put compression on the joint. It may not be a lot, but over a period of 10, 20, 30 years, that's going to wear away at that joint. So um, even if it's just tight muscles, get it looked after because that can manifest in arthritis later on in life. So definitely I agree with that. Well, 
when we come back. Mm -hmm. Ting here is going to dig into the real causes of neck pain and truly where stress does come into play. So don't go anywhere. More on the ins and outs of neck pain in wellness through physical therapy. Welcome back to Wellness Through Physical Therapy. I'm Julia Wiegand. Now, Ting's already given us an overview about the types of neck pain that patients do come in for in the day to day and where stress can often come into play. So now, Ting will be digging more into the different causes of neck pain. Mm -hmm. I mean, since the neck is directly connected to the head and the spine, mm -hmm. that takes a lot out of somebody to be in pain for so long. Mm -hmm in that area. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, the I don't, I don't know if people have watched um, Jerry Maguire out there, the little kid scene where he's like, the head, human head is 10 pounds, I think he says. So yeah, that's exactly correct. So if you got a 10 pound ball on st sitting on top of your spine and it's upright, you know, that's perfectly okay. But if you start to lean forward, um, that ball is going to create a tension up to like 30 to 60 pounds of pressure on the neck, uh, the neck muscle. So um, the neck is a very important area and it can really um, create issues with the rest of your body as well. So if you, the, the neck has connections to the head, headaches like you mentioned previously, um, migraine headaches, uh, tension headaches, sometimes feel it on the side of the head or the back of the head. Um, it also, they've also found that the neck can create pain into the shoulder blades. Um, so a lot of people that have that knot in between the shoulder blades, a lot of times that comes from the neck as well. And if you also, um, uh, there's also a lot of people when the neck pain gets bad enough that will start to get pains radiating out into the extremities. So classically the neck can create pain in the shoulder blade, in the chest, and also down the arm as well. Pain, tingling, numbness, that type of thing. So um, the neck can create a lot of issues and for the extreme cases, uh, the neck can also create pains in your back and legs. So those are extreme cases and in those cases that means that neck pain is quite severe. Now. We kind of touched on what could be some of the causes of uh, these types of neck pains. Mm -hmm. You mentioned sitting at a computer, huddled up, kind of mm -hmm. tense up here. Right. Um, but car accidents as well, you were mm -hmm. saying. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of causes for neck pain, but um, um, depending on the cause, you, you obviously want to get to know what the structures are that are creating the pain as well. So um, the, the things that we like to try and do from a, a medical standpoint is to try and come up with why. Um, so um, the most common areas that create neck pain, one is like we said, muscular. So muscular pains um, are more than knots, trigger points, tension, that type of stuff. And that usually manifests in like an aching type pain, um, pain with movement. Um, and potentially if you have a look at the trigger point charts, um, trigger points being like a knot, a very common one is the upper trapezius right here. And that's from people doing this all day. Um, so if you have a look at the trigger point from the upper trapezius, it radiates pain into the side of the head, creating that, that migraine or tension headache, like you said. Um, also, the second most common uh, type of cause for neck pain is um, tightness, like joint tightness. Um, we call it um, dysfunction. And uh, what that means, you may be starting to get a stiff joint, um, might have woken up wrong one day and you can't turn your neck. or um, if you're just starting to develop arthritis in your neck. Um, in those cases, what we wanna do is try and get in there and loosen up those joints. Uh, we do some techniques here, we'll demonstrate later, that we can get into the, the neck joints and start to, um, to manipulate those. Um, the third most common type of uh, neck pain is caused by discal issues. And discal issues, as we start to get older, discs start to degenerate, they start to bulge, and they start to put pressure. The discs themselves typically don't create pain, but they start to push on structures around it which tends to create pain. So discal pain typically will radiate down into the extremities, but there is a very easy way to detect whether it's discal pain or not, because discal pain ha is very predictable from a movement standpoint. And um, when we do certain movements, we expect to see that pain either get better or worse. And finally, there's, a, there's another pain that we call stenosis pain, which is basically essentially a pinched nerve. And um, if you get a pinched nerve, um, that could come from a disc, it could come from a tight joint, it could come from a tight muscle. Um, and again, we can, we're able to help uh, detect those um, through movement, but also we have some uh, diagnostic testings that we do here as well, such as an EMG um, or a nerve conduction study where we can actually find out if that is the cause of the pain. So the most common causes of the pain, the key thing you want to try and figure out is what's causing the pain. 
because if you find that it's a, if you if you're suffering from a disco problem and you treat it from a muscular standpoint, you're really not going to get too far with that. Right. Now, why does it seem like these, for lack of better words, pains <coughs> in the neck are mm. so common, mm. like, especially during stressful times and situations in one's life? Mm. So, um, stress manifests in tension, right? So the most when you're stressed, we tend to tighten up and tense up. Our muscles tend to tense up, and I hate to say this, but women carry stress more than men. <laughs> so um, if you're a worker and you're stressed out, um, you're going to start doing like this. So a muscle that's on tension uh, for a long period of time is going to basically be like a muscle that's working out 24-7. And if your muscle is under stress 24-7, over time it's going to start developing waste products in there like lactic acid, the, 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 the type of pain that you'll feel after a workout that's tough. And um, so when you get stressed, it just manifests everything. And just like, and like I said previous as well, the hormones, the, uh, the cortisol production, all the, the waste product production that comes with stress um, just isn't good for the body in general, isn't good for the muscles, and isn't good for pain. And is that almost why those tension migraines and headaches are so largely associated with stressful situations um, that are stress induced yeah so ten yeah tension headaches are exactly that from from tension um, so yeah and um, a lot of headaches if you look at the the map of the body and the trigger points as well um, headaches typically come from the very base of the skull and they also come from the shoulders here so um, if you have a look again at the tense position if you could imagine someone tense they, their head is tilted back their shoulders up um, that's going to get all those muscles nice and tight. It's going to compress all the muscles in the back of the, the back of the head, which um, is very classical for someone with headaches. Now, I know personally mm -hmm. I get a <clears throat> ton of neck pain, which leads to the occasional headache, tension mm -hmm. headache, which can obviously be very stressful. You know, I'm 25. Mm -hmm. I drive 40 minutes to work every single morning. I type scripts at my desk all day that mm -hmm. I later read for the news. Mm -hmm. It's all in, within a time period for a deadline, right. and on the occasion, right after all of my everyday stress, I run and do the replay camera for high school basketball and football. So mm -hmm. constantly for W Island Sports, I'm in a stressful position. I'm mm -hmm. zoomed up in there with my camera for replays. I'm focusing. I'm tense. I'm mm -hmm. stiff yep. for prolonged periods of time. Yep. So good posture is not very easy to come by. No. And that neck pain, for me, may seem dull or unimportant at the time, mm -hmm. but, you know, pain like this could always, could always be at the core of something mm -hmm. much bigger right. in my future. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, 25 getting neck pain. I mean, unfortunately, right now, um, the term we call it is tech or text neck. So all the people that tend to computers. Computers is the right. way of the world right now. So, yeah, we hear that a lot. Um, people on computers, they're stressed out through the day manifest with neck pain. So um, I'm 48 now, so I've had a neck injury when I was younger, mm -hmm. and it does come to haunt you later in life. So <laughs> be careful with that one. <laughs> and just to use my neck pain as an example, mm -hmm. I've found it more often than not responsible for limiting my range of motion mm -hmm. and causing more tension to build up in my neck and on my shoulders mm -hmm. and potentially which causes more pain in the future mm -hmm. and me not wanting to roll out of bed in the morning. Right. Yeah, that unfortunately <laughs> happens, yep. So what are some steps that can help manage our neck pain from stress, maybe even stuff that we can kind of sample at home? Mm -hmm. so, um, so number one, if you're on your cell phone a lot, there is actually an app mm -hmm. on there that you can look at. So what happens if um, when a cell phone is tilted down, the app will give you a warning that you're looking too far down. And then when you're at a good angle, it'll tell you that's a great angle to be reading at. So that number one, two. Maybe, um, I know you get engrossed in your work and uh, you, you kind of get um, like focused, but um, sometimes maybe set your watch or something for every half an hour um, just to get up, stretch, move. Um, a great neck exercise to do because we want to do the opposite of what we do. So just straighten up, shoulders back, head back, and just do some shoulder rolls is, is great at that. Um, try, always try some self-massage techniques. Um, I like to use tennis balls, um, all sorts of stuff, my hands. Uh, these days, you can use uh, massages, these, pa these powerful massages. We use the hypervolt here. And um, also do some exercise. I mean, movement is the opposite of what you're describing. So movement can really reverse everything else that's going on. So definitely try some things on your own. Heat, 
ice, uh, tens units, uh, whatever, go for massage. Um, great things to try. So if your stress-related neck pain's not relieved, you know, within a week or two of giving yourself some self-love and self-care, mm -hmm. um, is that a time where someone should consider, hmm, let's give physical a call and mm -hmm. see what they can do and the options that you guys mm -hmm. provide for someone in yep. getting treatment and to get to the source of anything, anything that might be underlying that mm -hmm may turn out more serious in the future than not? Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. If, if, so, if a pain's lasting more than like two weeks, um, get it checked out because it could be, I mean, I'm guilty of that myself. I get a pain, I wait longer than two weeks because <laughs> I kind of know what I'm doing, hopefully. But um, yeah, if, if it lasts more than two weeks, especially if it's on the moderate to severe stage, get it checked out before it becomes a major problem that you can't reverse. Well, so coming up after the break, Ting's going to dive into the benefits of physical therapy for neck pain, what it entails, and how physical comes into play. So stick around. We'll be wrapping things up with the ins and outs of neck pain on wellness through physical therapy. Welcome back to Wellness Through Physical Therapy. I'm Julia Wiegand, and Ting's been giving us the ins and outs of neck pain and how stress comes into play. By treating both our mind and body, we can help lessen that stress and the pain resulting from it. That being said, a week or two with the same pain in the neck can be more than stressful, so maybe now it's time to give physical therapy a go. And physical has a series of practices available that have proven helpful in addressing neck pain. And we've got Julian as our model today. Say hey, Julian. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away, team. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, so Julian has been nice enough to volunteer here. So for the people that are coming with neck pain, obviously, like I said, you know, what, the first thing we want to do is try and figure out what's causing the neck pain. And um, once we know what's causing the neck pain, we can go and directly treat that. So let's, for example, Julian came into us and we figured out his neck pain is related to stiff tissues, um, tension, like you said, muscle tension, and also joint tension. So one of the things we want to do is, one, we want to loosen up that tension as quickly as possible. Um, a lot of people think that physical therapists, all we do is get them on treadmills and exercise. <laughs> but um, one of the big things that we like to do here is we like to manipulate tissue to help tissue feel better and heal. So um, some of the techniques that we would utilize um, for soft tissue especially, um, one is uh, we need to loosen up like the fascial system in the body. And one of the best ways to loosen up the fascial system is through two techniques that we utilize, um, one called scraping, two called cupping. So, um, borrowed from some uh, traditional Chinese and Middle Eastern uh, treatment techniques. Just drop some cream in my shoe there. So uh, scraping is, is good for loosening up fascia and it's, um, it's actually quite a comfortable technique. And upper trap right here is classic where people get a lot of tension. So um, a lot of times we'll focus some of our attention on that area and also on the base of the neck right here as well. Uh, Julian has been nice enough to shave for us. So um, getting in through there um, with the scraper can be very good at the, the first layer of loosening up the fascial system. And uh, once we do that, we'll typically do that for between like three to five minutes. Um, we can get in there with our cups, our medical cupping. And with the cups, this is really good at pulling fascial layers apart. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll get in there, um, allow that cup to suction up the, the, the surface layer. So you can pull the surface layer from the deepest layers. And what that does is it helps with um, reducing the uh, the, the adhesions and the, uh, the scar tissue that builds underneath. And um, I won't go too hard on you here, Julian, don't worry. <laughs> and um, so I'll put a cup here on his neck as well. And what that does is it just creates like a tension um, from the outside, inside out. So we can pull those layers apart and help reduce. If you can imagine scar tissue binding the layers together, uh, what this can do is help uh, reduce that. And once we get some of the surface layers uh, softened up, we can get in there with our hands and manipulate his joints. Um, so we can get in there um, and get in there and feel the joints. Usually I had Julian, I'd have Julian laying down and we will get in there and manipulate the joints. And if we have to get in deeper, we have a great machine here called the Miracle Wave. And uh, what this does is allows us to get into the deeper layers without um, really having to push hard. Okay, and uh, so this is kind of like a, um, 
like a percussion device and um, it's kind of like a tapping and creates a like a shock wave into the system and uh, hopefully Julian's nice and comfortable there and we'll do this again for about three to five minutes to really get down into those deep layers and if that doesn't bust up any knots and tissues I'm not sure what will so <laughs> um, so once we bust up all that tissue and get things nice and loose the next step obviously is to try and normalize uh, posture function strength range of motion so um, a lot of people may be more familiar with some exercises that we do um, so like I had mentioned before, um, what we would want to encourage Julian to do is open up the shoulders, um, get proper posture, head over shoulders, um, try and get better alignment. And uh, so we would go into some exercise to try and strengthen um, the back of the shoulders typically get weak, front of the shoulders typically get tight, the back of the neck typically gets tight, the front of the neck typically gets weak. So that would be the areas that we would target for, um, for someone that was Typically, would be having typical like tension, um, soft tissue type, he uh, not headaches, but um, neck pains. Uh, if it was something more related to a discal problem, we would more move more towards uh, some gentler techniques. Um, one of the things that's good for a discal problem is a, a particular exercise uh, we call them retractions, and it would be like a repeated head movement like this, which can help um, a disc kind of uh, when a disc is kind of like bulged. Um, the material in the disc tends to not leak out, but it tends to bulge, and that'll help the disc material uh, get back to where it should be. So based on the types of problems that we find, we'd cater treatment towards that. Well, once again, thank you, Ting and Julian, for giving our viewers and myself a much-needed demonstration as to how neck pain can be alleviated through physical therapy. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> So both neck pain and stress are not something you should deal with long-term or alone. The sooner you can solve the mystery of your neck pain, the sooner you can get back to living your day-to-day. -day. And you can get effective neck pain relief treatment right here in Hazleton. So for more information about treating neck pain with physical therapy, be sure to contact Physical today. Thank you for joining us on Wellness Through Physical Therapy. We'll see you next time.